hey guys welcome back to the channel and in this video we will be understanding how charge to mass ratio of electrons was found out by sir jj thompson but guys before starting with this video i have a small request for you all that it is necessary for you to know what are cathode rays don't worry if you don't know what are cathode rays the link is given in the description box it i have made a very short video on that you can watch that video and then come to this video so now coming back to the topic we will first have a short and a quick introduction about what is this topic about so initially when cathode rays were invented nobody had an idea about what were electrons nobody knew what are electrons the only thing people knew was that the cathode rays are made up of particles and cathode rays are negatively charged on so on this basis sir jj thompson who was a british physicist what he did was that he found the ratio of charge of particles of cathode rays upon mass of particles of cathode rays that is he divided the charge of particles of cathode rays by its mass and he found out what is that value and for finding this value what he did was that he created a specially designed cathode ray tube now what is this cathode ray tube we will understand and what actually helped sir jj thompson to find out this value okay so now basically this is how a cathode ray tube looks like so this is same somehow same like the discharge tube only here also we have a negatively charged plate which is known as the cathode and a positively charged plate which is known as a anode okay and in between this anode there is a hole for this cathode rays to pass and hit the screen and as we all know that when the cathode rays hit the screen they create a fluorescence okay a fluorescence is created by this cathode rays and the initial and the additional things which are added by sir jj thompson is that he created a magnetic field with the help of these magnets as you can see over here this is north pole and this is the south pole so with the help of this magnet he created a magnetic field and with the help of this electric plate it is a positively charged electric plate and a negatively charged electric plate he created a electric field so now we will understand its uses individually see first of all when there was no electric field and no magnetic field this cathode rays were traveling in a straight line and traveling in a straight line they hit the screen at y okay but now when you connect an electric field okay so when only electric field is connected what happens is that see magnetic field is not connected guys only electric field is connected so when only electric field is connected this cathode rays get attracted towards the positively charged plate why they get attracted towards the positively charged plate because as we all know that the cathode rays are negatively charged and since they are negatively charged and this plate being positively charged opposite charges attract each other therefore this cathode ray being negatively charged going to get attracted towards this positively charged plate and it is going to change its direction and instead of going to y it is going to hit the screen at x okay so because of the attraction the cathode rays are now hitting the screen at x okay so now i hope you understood what is the help of this electric field this electric field is used to change the direction of this cathode rays okay so now next we will understand what is the use of this magnetic field now we are connecting only magnetic field electric field is now removed and only magnetic field is connected so now when you connect only magnetic field what happens is that this cathode rays okay instead of traveling and hitting at y they get deflected towards the z okay so now guys if you observe one thing carefully that due to the electric field this cathode rays are getting attracted upwards and due to this magnetic field the cathode rays are getting attracted downwards so can i comment that the electric field okay the electric field and the magnetic field both are trying to pull the cathode rays in opposite directions okay 
so this electric field and magnetic field both are trying to pull the cathode ray in opposite direction electric field is trying to pull the cathode ray in upward direction and magnetic field is trying to pull the cathode ray in downward direction now the one point which you need to know while drawing this diagram is that this magnetic field and this electric field they both are perpendicular to each other okay and they are also perpendicular to the path of this cathode rays so all three things that are electric field magnetic field and path of this cathode rays they all three are perpendicular to each other same like the x y and z axis okay this is the only thing which you need to keep in mind and i hope you all understood that because of magnetic field it is getting deflected downwards and because of the electric field it is getting deflected upwards now what sir j j thompson did in the experiment was that first he connected the electric field first he connected only electric field and because of the electric field as we all know that these cathode rays are going to get deflected towards x okay so now the cathode rays have got deflected towards the x and in the second step what he did was that he connected the magnetic field also electric field was connected and now we connected magnetic field also so now what is magnetic field going to do is that magnetic field is going to pull the cathode rays downwards am i right okay so these cathode rays which were up will be pulled by the magnetic field downwards and the value of magnetic field is adjusted in such a way that this cathode rays which are at x are pulled downward and brought back to y which is its initial position okay so now this is the third point that the value of magnetic field is adjusted such that it compensates the effect of electric field electric field first what did it moved the cathode rays upwards but now magnetic field compensated its effect and it brought back the cathode rays to its initial position that is at y so now this is what is the experiment all about to compensate the effect of electric field and bring back the cathode ray to its original position okay so now with the help of this experiment sir j j thompson was successfully able to find out this ratio okay so the charge of particles of cathode rays by pay attention on this word a uh, particles of cathode rays charge of particles of cathode rays divided by the mass of particles of cathode rays is equals to 1.758820 into 10 raised to 11 coulombs per kg so after repeated experiments with cathode rays of different energies that is he took cathode rays of different energies he took electric field of different strengths magnetic field of different strengths so he did multiple experiments of same type and he found out successfully this value that the value is 1.75 into 10 raised to 11 coulombs per kg now similarly i simplify this uh, formula as charge of particles of cathode rays which is represented by e upon mass of particles of cathode rays represented by m is equals to 1.758820 now guys you need to emphasize on this word particles particles of cathode rays what we have found out we have found out the charge to mass ratio of particles of cathode rays okay now keep in mind this word particles of cathode rays similarly now what happened was that for any material of cathode and any gas in cathode ray tube the ratio remain the same which means that you take whichever material of cathode no matter of any element that this cathode was made and whichever gas you take in this cathode ray tube the ratio remained the same that is 1.75 into 10 raised to 11 okay so now what was concluded on this was that i hope you understood this point that whichever material of cathode you take or whichever gas you take inside this cathode ray tube there was no effect on the ratio the ratio remained the same so with the help of this point two things were concluded what were those two things 
the particles of cathode rays are identical to each other see the particles of cathode rays are identical to each other therefore the ratio is remaining same am i right whichever particle you are take which are material of cathode you are taking the ratio is remaining same why the ratio is remaining same because the particles are the same okay until and unless the particles are the same the ratio won't be same na their electric charge to mass ratio won't be same until and unless their particles are identical okay the particles are same and second point that was concluded was that these particles are universal constituents of all atoms of all elements which means that these particles of cathode ray these particles of cathode rays are present in each and every atom of every element that no matter whichever material element you take the cathode ray particles are present in every atom of every element okay and now sir h a lorentz a dutch physicist named these particles as electrons so the particles of cathode ray the particles of these cathode rays were named as electrons as we all know that electrons are present in atoms of all elements now read this second point you will get to know what i meant to say that electrons are present in atoms of all elements i hope you know this okay so now this was how actually electrons were discovered now if i go back again can i say guys since this charge since these particles are named as electrons okay since this particles of cathode rays particles of cathode rays are named as electrons so can i say that the charge of electrons upon mass of electrons is equals to 1.75 into 10 raised to 11 coulombs per kg now if you carefully observe this formula what is given is that coulombs per kg what is the meaning of per kg per kg means what for 1 kg mass of electrons for 1 kg mass of electrons the charge is 1.758 into 10 is to 11 coulombs coulombs is the unit of charge okay so guys i hope uh, you have understood this video if there is any doubt you can comment below or you can contact me via my email i have given it in the description box so guys you can check out my playlist where i have uploaded 11th and 12th physics and chemistry videos so guys please do not forget to subscribe to the channel and do like this video do share it with your friends and guys thank you so much for watching this video